Welcome back, Petapixel viewers. It is Chris Nichols here. I'm just coming off of a cold, so my voice is going to be rough, but the show must go on. We've got a great reason for it to go on because we are reviewing the most expensive lens that I have ever personally held. It is the brand new Nikkor 600mm f4s. So this is their fully professional 600 millimeter F4, which also has a built-in teleconverter 1.4 times to give you an 840 millimeter full frame equivalent at F5.6. Now I did get my hands on this earlier in Yellowstone with the Nikon Z8 review, but it was a pre-production lens. So here now we have a production model and we can do the further testing that we wanted to on things like sharpness, flare resistance, that kind of stuff. Plus just have a fun day out. We're going to the Calgary Zoo here. We've got a brand new Canadian Wilds exhibit and most of those animals don't mind the winter time. So Let's see what we can get today. Okay, welcome back. We had a great time at the zoo. My weapon of choice here today was, of course, the new 600 millimeter on a Nikon Z8. And because we're at the zoo, you know, I don't want to be rocking a tripod or a monopod. I don't want to be getting in people's way or, you know, creating some sort of barricade or anything like that. So I really shot this handheld. We had good light today. I just really want to see how is this manageable handheld. So looking at the handling here first, let's talk about the obvious thing. It's big and therefore it is going to be a heavier lens. But to give context, this is 3,260 grams. So that's a knocked and a plena plus a little bit of change left over. And I have to admit with the Z8 on there, hand holding it, there's some times where if I stayed on animal for a couple of minutes, my arm was starting to get a little bit sore. But that being said, it's still significantly lighter than even Nikon's lightest 600 millimeter for their SLR series, their AFS 600 millimeter F4E fluorite element ED lens with VR is still going to be around 3,900 grams. So this is still significantly lighter. And I certainly was able to manage hand holding it all day. I just complained a lot. But let's not forget that we also have a built-in teleconverter, 1.4 times for that weight. So all things considered, you're getting a lighter package that's easier to manage, and that really is the benefit of a mirrorless platform altogether. Otherwise, we have all the control rings and features that you'd want on a professional telephoto lens. So nice long hood here, which gives a lot of protection that front element. We do have customizable buttons here. We do have the switch where I can go left or right, and I can command each of those directions to be a different function. That's very versatile. We do also have a custom command ring here. Now, this really just does exposure comp or ISO or aperture. And I will say that honestly, I found I was constantly budging it. And in this case, I had aperture set, my aperture would go up to F13. I'm like, what the hell is going on? It's because I was just honestly moving that a lot. So I ended up disabling it, but you know, you can try it out and see how you feel about it. Nice manual focus ring, but then we get to the lens collar. So I mean, the thing with the lens collars, if I'm spending over $15,000 US, I want it so that when I crank down, it doesn't still turn on me like that. I mean, that's not good. I also want a lens collar that when I do have it going to 90 degree detente, it actually clicks in place. I really like that, but I'm not getting that for my $15,000. Also, if I'm going to spend north of $15,000 USD, I want dovetail cuts for Arca Swiss tripods on the tripod plate, and I'm still not getting that. I want 30 seconds of machining for that extra money. Now, of course, I've got my teleconverter here and I can just quickly flick that switch anytime. I've got a locking mechanism there, memory set button right behind it, which is easy to press. Another customizable function button, autofocus, manual focus, selector switch, and I do have my focus limiter as well. And this does use a standard drop in filter system. This lens is also VR. And so I do wish I had a switch for VR on here to engage all the different modes, but I could at least customize one of the many customizable buttons to do that. Now on a lens like this, which you're gonna use for wildlife and sports photography, you want the autofocus be really fast. So Nikon's using their silky smooth voice coil motors and indeed as you can see here it is silky and smooth and very snappy from near to infinity. So the autofocus couple with the Nikon Z8's wildlife subject detection I actually found the tracking to be very effective. It was transitioning quickly at different distances and my hit rate was very high. So this is an optimum setup if you're going to shoot any sort of action-oriented photography. 
Now bokeh is actually very important on an extreme telephoto like this because you're often gonna have shallow depth of field and soft backgrounds, you know, behind wildlife and stuff. Specular highlights does sometimes show up in the back of the frame and so I do like to test it. Here you can see shooting wide open at f4, beautiful soft bokeh, no onion rings whatsoever, slight soap bubble effect. When you stop the lens down a little bit, we still get nice round shapes. We're still getting a bit of that soap bubble effect, but otherwise very clean. And what this translates then into is just shallow, beautiful depth of field and just gorgeous transitions from in focus to out of focus. So for any sort of animal shots or sports action shots, I think you'll really be happy with the way that the background is rendered just smooth and silky. Now, because we had such a sunny day here, I definitely want to shoot this lens towards the sun a bit and see how it handled things. So first off, no flare issues. I mean, I'm not seeing any loss of contrast, no ghosting problems at all. You know, you could see the branches here in front of the sun. We're not really getting much chromatic aberration. And I also want to test for loca, longitudinal chromatic aberration. That's where we see color fringing in the foreground and background out of focus areas. That wasn't the case here in high contrast scenes either. So this lens is really well corrected. But what it doesn't have is cutouts for an Arca Swiss style tripod head on the actual lens collar. Okay, next is an easy talk. Let's talk about sharpness. But did I mention that the lens collar isn't cut for Arca Swiss style tripods? Anyways, when it comes to sharpness, this lens is absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's basically perfect. Looking here in the center, shooting wide open at F4, tons of detail, super sharp. I mean, stopping down really didn't make any difference. And then when you look at the corners, you're focused wide open. Again, nice and sharp. Stopping down helps maybe a little bit. It's honestly, already pretty much perfect even shooting wide open at f4. I did also want to do a test with the teleconverter on. You can see it here. Same thing. I actually found the teleconverter really didn't degrade image quality in any serious way. I was still very happy with the sharpness in the center here. Stopping down you can see maybe a slight improvement. In the corners again it really doesn't matter if you focus in the corners or the center. This lens is sharp right across the frame. So you know what? I really like this lens. I mean other than the fact the lens collar shifts a little bit and I mean you know the dovetails aren't cut out for our Swiss. I think I've harped on that enough but what else is there really to complain about this lens? I mean, it's rugged, it's well built, it's actually fairly compact given its design. Uh, you know, the minimum focusing distance is on par with its contemporaries. Sometimes I was a little bit too close at the zoo, but at regular wildlife ranges that won't be an issue. And I really love the versatility of the teleconverter because this being a fixed prime, I had that extra distance if I needed it or I could pull back if I was too close. I mean, it actually worked out really well and I don't have to be taking off the lens, putting the converter on and slapping things back on. And on top of that, this lens is basically optically perfect. So what's the real issue here with this lens? Well, it is very expensive. I mean, it's the most expensive lens that I've ever personally looked at. And if you look at contemporary lenses, other 600 millimeters, they're generally going to be in that twelve to $13,000 USD price point, which is already very expensive. But remember that this does have the built-in teleconverter and that does add value there. But honestly, this lens is made for a select group of people. I mean, really, if you're very passionate about wildlife photography or if you're making wildlife and sports photography you're living you're gonna write this off as a business expense I think it's money well spent and if you happen to be an enthusiast who just has the wallet to handle this and you want the very best possible why not I mean you will enjoy using this lens anyways I hope you guys found this enjoyable and educational and deciding whether this lens might be right for you despite its high price point leave your comments below and let us know what you think please we always love to hear back on that uh, do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and check out our podcast you can listen to us on all your favorite podcasting apps or you can also just see it right here on the same channel just search for petapixel podcast thanks for joining us guys we'll see you soon with more episodes of petapixel